Captain Coder here, and in this guide, I will be walking you through how to create a simple player controller that moves a player object around on the screen. This is the first part of our Simple 2D Platformer project, and if you'd like to be notified when the next part of this series comes out, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Before we hop in, I want to remind you that you can ask your own questions, share your projects, and join Captain Coders Academy on Discord with the link below in the description. You can also catch me streaming that captaincoder.live, where I create fun projects like this and answer all of your programming questions. And without further ado, let's hop in. The first thing we want to do to get a new Unity project is I've opened up Unity Hub here. And I'm going to select new project and the project I'm going to do in editor version 2022.3.0 F1. As long as it's Unity 2022, everything should work along with what we're doing in this. More importantly, though, we want to make sure we're doing a 2D project and we want to select a folder. Where are we going to put this thing? So click on this to browse to location. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine down here. I'm gonna create a new folder for it. Create new folder. I'm gonna call this my game jam project. And it actually is gonna create a separate folder for you. So I'm gonna select this folder. You get a second folder based on your project name. So in this project, I'm gonna call it getting started platformer. I'm gonna select create project. And after a moment, Unity will actually put together a template project for you to use. Unity starts loading here. This can take a couple minutes depending on the speed of your computer, how much memory you have, a bunch of different things. Usually takes under five minutes, but may take a little bit longer for you. So go ahead, get yourself a new Unity project in the 2D template, and when you're ready, hop back in. Once your project has loaded, you should have a scene that looks pretty similar to this one here. This is the default layout that I will be using. If you have previously worked in a different layout, it might look slightly differently. One way you can get it to look exactly like mine is in the top menu here where it says window. Click that. You're going to come down to layouts and select the default layout. That is the layout I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So make sure you're on the default default layout. Next, we want to select the editor we're going to use. I personally use Visual Studio Code. A lot of people use Visual Studio. A lot of people use Writer. Whichever editor you want to use, go ahead and use that. Just make sure it's set up in your preferences. You can get there by selecting Edit, going down to Preferences. And then you're going to select External Tools on the side here. For me, I'm using Visual Studio Code, so I have that selected. You can alternatively select Microsoft Visual Studio or Writer, whatever you want to use for your text editor. I happen to use Visual Studio Code. And there's one extra step for getting Visual Studio Code to work specifically with Unity 2022. And we're gonna do that now. Again, if you're using Visual Studio, go ahead and skip this step. You don't have to add this. But if you wanna use Visual Studio Code to follow exactly what I'm doing, go ahead and select Window from the top down here. Select Project Manager. And then we're gonna come into our Unity registry and we're gonna search for code. And this is gonna let us install the Visual Studio Code Editor here, which is my personal preference. You can use whichever editor you want. We select Install. And now this is gonna ensure that we're using Visual Studio Code Editor rather than Visual Studio or Writer. It's gonna be up to you which one you want to use. Once that's done installing, you can go ahead and close the Package Manager. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a simple player into the scene that we can move back and forth on the screen. To do this, I'm gonna go to my hierarchy here. By default, we're in the sample scene. If it says untitled here, you just wanna find the sample scene. Go ahead and double click this to open it. You have sample scene. And let's go ahead and rename this to personalize it. I'm gonna call mine 2D level. You can call it whatever you'd like, and you'll notice it changes that here in our hierarchy. We want to make sure we're on this scene. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add in a simple sprite here. This is gonna be a square sprite. It's gonna be our player. It's gonna be the player that we're gonna move around on the screen. I'm just gonna leave this square. Oh, maybe I'll rename it here, I'll call it player. Perfect. And what we want to do is we wanna be able to move this player back and forth on the screen. And to do this, we're gonna write a very simple player script. Let's come back to our assets folder. I'm gonna right click here, select create folder. I'm gonna call it scripts. We're gonna try and stay organized as much as we can. As projects grow, it's really important to stay organized. We're gonna do our best to follow some good practices in that regard. Let's go ahead and open up our scripts folder and we're gonna write a very simple player script. We can right click here in our scripts folder, select create, select C sharp script. I'm gonna call this player controller. And in fact, let's change this again from player controller to player movement controller. I wanna be player movement controller. And I'm gonna double click to open this once it's ready here. And this will launch my editor, whichever you have configured. If you have Visual Studio, open Visual Studio. If you have Writer, open Writer. I have Visual Studio Code, it opens it up here for me. One thing to notice is I renamed it after I'd created this file and it's player controller here, but the file is called player movement control. If you rename files in Unity, it won't update the script itself. So we want these two things to match exactly, including the case. Notice capital P, capital M, capital C. So I'm gonna call this player movement controller, make it match identical on all three. Notice here, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stretch this out so you can see here, player movement controller. And we're gonna save this so you have the name matching all places. We click over to Unity. It's gonna take a second to load and recompile. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually attach this to our player object. This is a game object here. We're gonna select add component, type in player movement controller. There we are, we're gonna go player movement controller. We've added it in, perfect. Alternatively, you can actually just drag this onto your player there, it'll add it. And you can also do it directly into the scene there. There's many ways to do it. My preferred way is to click add component. You can do whatever works best for you. Right now, our player movement controller does nothing. It has this start method. The section is called a method. It has this update method. Neither of those do anything. We're not gonna use the start method for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. But we are gonna use the update method. We use the update method to move our player around on the screen. So let's come back over here to our object so we can understand how we move this thing on the screen. If we look at our player, it has this thing called the transform. In fact, everything in the scene has something called the transform. This determines how Unity transforms where it is on the screen, the rotation, the scale. So what we can do is if we click this little move controller on the left, so I'm gonna click player, click move, these arrows will show up and I can actually drag my player around. Notice in our transform, the position changes as I move this. So we can change the position of a player on the screen by dragging it around. We can scale it up. So it transforms information about how this thing should be transformed in the game. Lastly, there's also this rotation in 2D, the Z axis allows us to rotate it. We're gonna leave that static for now. And what I want to do is I want to be able to adjust this transform from my controller. One way we could do this is typing in transform dot position. And we actually get access to this position and we want to change the position of this. It would be one, well, one way we could do this, we're gonna say plus is equals. We're gonna take our position, we're gonna add to it, we'll do vector two dot right. And this is gonna cause our player to move to the right on the screen. If we look at this here, oh, what is this saying here? Plus equals then biggest on app round vector three. Oh, oh, so vector three, I apologize. Transform has three vectors. We're 2D, we're doing X, Y mostly. But if we look at the position here, we have X, Y, Z. There's three bits of this. So we're gonna do the vector three here. All right, so I've come back here, that'll fix it. So transform.position plus equals vector three dot right. So this will cause our square to move to the right every frame. Update happens every frame. We're gonna move it to the right here. I'm going to bring our square back over here so we can watch it. It's going to move across the screen. Every frame, it's going to move one, one unit to the right. It's going to just disappear super fast here. You're going to see it there for a second. And it's gone. It's gone. And the X position increases drastically, incredibly fast. 
We want this to move at a slower pace. Instead of moving to the right at the speed of, of every frame one pixel, we're gonna scale this so it moves across the screen at one unit per second. So when you take this right value and we're gonna scale it by time dot delta time. So there's this special magic value, time dot delta time. If we hover over it, we hear the interval in seconds from the last frame to the current one. So this is gonna scale. So if we're moving at 60 frames per second, every 60 frames, delta time will equal one second. So if we add it up, it adds it up over time. So this is gonna scale it so it moves one unit per second. So let's go ahead and save this, scale it by delta prime by multiplying it, come back and let's look at that here. So we'll click play. And now it's gonna be scaled independent of your frame rate. So if you have a really fast computer, it's gonna move at the same speed. See, check it out, moves at one per unit. We still don't have the ability to control that movement. So let's update that now. Let's make it so we can control moving left, right. So rather than doing vector dot right, we need to get another value that tells us whether we should move to the right or to the left. And we can do this by creating a new variable. I'm looking at a variable, it's a floating point type. Float is just a number that can have decimals. You can think of float as a like 1.25, 2.7, 0.5. We're gonna call this left, right. And we're gonna set this equal to what's called our horizontal axis. So we're gonna do input.get axis, horizontal. So this is the left, right axis. On a controller, this is the analog stick, left and right. On the keyboard, it's A and D by default, or the left and right arrows. So we take our left, right. If nothing's being pressed, it's zero. If we're pressing left, it becomes negative one. If we're pressing right, it becomes positive one. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna multiply we have left, right in here, oops, left, right, times, and I gotta spell it correctly here, times, right. So if we're negative one and we multiply it here, this will be negative. If we're positive, we multiply it here, it's gonna be positive one. And so now it will only move if the player is pressing the button. Let's test it out. Let's come back over to Unity here. We're gonna click run and test it out. And now if I'm holding the right movement key, I move to the right, I let go, nothing, it stops. If I hold the left, it moves to the left. Perfect, and it's super slow, it's super slow. Last thing we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna make it so that we have a speed variable that determines how fast the player can move. So we can adjust it. We could come in here and say five times and maybe that's the speed we want. We can sort of build these constants in that specify things, but why not make a little knob we can use to adjust that speed? So we're gonna create a variable, private float. Again, this is a number value. We're gonna call this speed equals five. And in C sharp, a good convention is to use this thing private. Don't worry too much about what private means. What it really means is that we can access this variable anywhere inside of these, these uh, curly braces here, this player movement control. Anything between these curly braces, we can access it. And now we're gonna substitute this in as our speed here. So we're gonna speed of five. And what I want to do is I want to be able to edit this value in my editor. So I'm gonna add in this attribute here. So I do square bracket serialize field on our private variable. And this is gonna give me the ability to edit it in my Unity inspector. Let's wait for this to load here for a second. And now I have this, I can actually adjust it here. So I can change 56, probably too high. Let's go to five, we'll leave it there. We'll see if that is the speed that we like. And if not, we can adjust it a little bit. Okay, so I can move left, five's okay. Maybe 10 would be better, I can adjust it here, press 10. Now I can move even faster, move even faster. Left, right, let's go to 15, maybe 15 is the right number for us. 15 feels pretty good. All right, and I'm gonna press the play button to stop. Notice when I stop, the speed gets reset here back to five. It's whatever it was before I started playing. So be very careful when you're editing things in the inspector while, while the game is running. Let's go ahead and set this to 15 here.
awesome. If all's gone well, you're well on your way to creating your very first Unity platformer. We have a player object that we've added to our scene. We've created a player movement controller script that allows us to create an adjustable speed for our player that uses the update method to move the player around in the scene on the horizontal axis, moving left and right. Congratulations on starting your very own Unity project. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you would like to be notified when the next video is out, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Also, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask in the comments below or at Captain Coders Academy on Discord. The community there is absolutely amazing and people are always helping each other out. Thank you again so much for watching. And as always, keep coding, keep growing, be the best you you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. Have a beautiful day. Bye bye.